Okay, so this is my last video over solving linear rational equations. We are working on examples in which we have variables in the denominator, and I have one more example of this. So let's just go to that example here, um, this guy here. This is a pretty typical example because this is more in polynomial form rather than any of the other examples so far. So the emphasis on this one will definitely be on factoring the denominators where we've gotten away with not really having to do that in our last few examples. So we need to factor it using those factoring techniques that we learned a couple sets of videos ago. So beyond that, the steps are the same. I suggest that you pause the video and see if you can work this one all the way to the end. And don't forget to check your final answer to make sure that you do not get zero in the denominator. Okay, so the first thing that I need to do is factor each of these denominators. My first denominator here has three terms in descending order with no common factors, so it's a trinomial. So I'll set it up as my FOIL process, my unfoil process, where y times y gives me y squared, 3 times 5 gives me 15, and a positive 3y and a positive 5y gives me my middle term of positive 8y. In my second fraction, this y plus 3 is one unit. Remember, addition and subtraction is a glue that sticks those guys together. And in my last fraction, my y plus 5 is also one unit. So my LCD here is going to be both of these factors, y plus 3 times y plus 5. So I move to my next step of multiplying each of these terms by my LCD. So in my first fraction, I'm going to multiply it by y plus 3, y plus 5. Second fraction, same thing. And last fraction, again, same thing. So when I multiply these, all of my denominators should disappear. In my first fraction, the y plus 3s cancel, the y plus 5s cancel. That leaves me with just my numerator of 6 minus 2, don't lose the negative, as I've shown you in a couple examples before. The y plus 3 cancels here, so I have a 2 times a y plus 5 is equal to, in my last fraction, my y plus 5 cancel out, so that leaves me with a negative 4 times y plus 3. And voila, it's magic. I have no more fractions and no more denominators. So I'm down to a linear equation. So from here, my steps are to simplify. I'm going to distribute these numbers, distribute my negative 2 on the left and my negative 4 on the right. That leaves me with 6 minus 2y minus 10 is equal to negative 4y minus 12. Combine my terms on my left-hand side of the equation. 6 minus 10 gives me a negative 4 minus 2y. And it doesn't matter what order I write that in, as negative 4 minus 2y, or if I wrote it as negative 2y minus 4. It's all the same thing. And that's equal to my right-hand side, just copying it down. Now I need to rearrange these to put all my y's on one side and all my constants on another. So let me move my negative 4y to the left by adding 4y, opposite operation, and my negative 4 to the right by adding 4. That leaves me with a positive 2y here and a negative 8 there. So my final step, I'm going to squish this down here, is to divide by 2, and that leaves me with my overall answer of y equals negative 4. Now, because this problem had variables in the denominator, I definitely need to check 
to make sure my denominator does not come out to be zero, but really you should be checking the whole entire solution. So I have substituted those green negative fours in for every place where I had y in my original equation. So let me just simplify these fractions here. This gives me six over a negative one minus 2 over negative 1 is equal to negative 4 over 1. And I can see that I do not have 0 in the denominator, so that check goes through. But I'm this far, so I might as well check the rest of the problem. So it gives me with negative 6 plus 2, because these two negatives cancel out. And of course, that is in fact equivalent to negative 4. So this checks out, which means I can go back and box and insert my final answer to this problem. And we see how to solve rational equations, even when they include polynomials, like this example here. So that concludes how to solve all linear equations, and that concludes how to solve all rational or fraction equations when they simplify down to the linear equations themselves. And so that's where this set of videos ends.